We've got a tremendous governing board at New Horizon Church. In fact, they've been doing a congregational study here over the spring. Uh, if you don't know who your governing board is, that's listed in your program today. Those people are always available to you. They would love to have conversation, your thoughts, your feedback, and in fact, that's what they've been doing here. And so uh, these guys, Andy and Scott, are going to share from our congregational study, and 68 of you were involved in this, so thank you very much. Gentlemen. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. And Scott, I don't know about you. Actually, I do know about you. I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of a healthy, growing, vibrant, passionate congregation of people who love Jesus. Agreed. Um, I'm excited, one, for just New Horizon in general. I'm excited about my own uh, walk here and growth. Um, and I'm excited to share the stage here with Superman uh, <laughs> this, this morning. Uh, but most importantly, I'm excited on this initiative, and that's for us identifying ways that we can really live into Jesus' calling for us to make disciples. Yeah, so here's the deal, gang. Church growth doesn't happen by accident, right? It, it requires great intentionality. It requires great intentionality for all of us. We pray for growth. We pray for good strategies that will help us to achieve growth. We plan and we develop programs so that we can grow as a body of Christ, and we work together collectively to be a part of what God has, has planned for New Horizon. Right, and... Um, Getting that feedback here and asking um, business owners, right? So one way is you go out and kind of, you go and you want the whole uh, community, you want everybody to come in, but another approach is to understand your current base, your current customers, your current members, and really understanding um, what are those key points, what, what got them in the door what were those things they picked on initially? Uh, and then what kind of keeps them coming back? So for the first phase of this initiative, we decided to dive deep really into our current congregation of folks to really understand what brought people here, what keeps them coming back, what do you uh, get from New Horizon? We interviewed 68 people. Uh, our governing board and a couple of others did. And so if you're one of those 68 people, thank you, thank you, thank you thank for you. giving us some of your time. If you're not one of those 68 people, don't be offended. It was a random selection of folks so that we could have uh, uh, good data points from all over the place. Um, but we, do, we did want to make sure that we were getting a good, broad sample of people. And uh, through those conversations, um, got a ton of great feedback. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Really just awesome feedback. Uh, that stretches back years and years and years, uh, that's very present, what's going on. And then uh, kind of the four pillars. So there's a ton of feedback, right? And you could go multiple different directions with that. So we needed to distill that down, kind of four pillars, what were we hearing? And that is just one, how'd you find us? How'd you find New Horizon? Um, that critical key first impressions. When you walked in the door, you're wide-eyed, right? You're, everything's new. What are you taking in? What, what, what did you think about that? Um, number three was really what, what got you engaged? What kept you coming back? What pulled you in? And understanding that, understanding if there was any common thread that we could pull out there. And then also uh, kind of looking to the future. You know, what are you excited about? What could we do? And how could we grow together uh, as a church? So the idea here is that we want to say, hey, if it works for one soul who calls New Horizon home, chances are very good that it could work for another soul. So that's part of our, our growth recipe. And big time spoiler alert here, a lot of the stuff that we learned has actionable, applicable uh, items that you can be a part of as a part of New Horizon. I, I might even go so far as to call you God's homework uh, for us as New Horizon stakeholders. Um, so tons and tons of data, but we want to sort of bring forth the foremost uh, appropriate. Um, so for that first story, there were a number of different ways that people came to hear about New Horizon for the very first time. Yes, and m many of these will probably ring true for you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, radio ads, uh, you know, out by the wind tur turbine. Was it turbine, out by turbine. the turbine, I think. If it is. were solar panel, you'd know how to pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Out by the wind turbine. I remember that on the radio. Um, yard signs. I know a lot of you guys remember those and maybe seeing those yard signs. Uh, maybe just driving past. Maybe you're going to a different church and you kind of, something was nudging you. You're like, what's going, what's going on uh, over there? But really, 
through that and through those multiple different ways, there was kind of one commonality, one common thread, and it really was just three uh, little words. Those three words we heard a lot time and time again. I was invited. <laughs> a lot of people are sitting here today because of the invitation of another person. Now, the way that those invitations came were different. Sometimes it was, hey, we're having a special service and we'd love to, love to have you there. Hey, maybe there's a special speaker uh, that one came because there was a special speaker and she came for the very first time oh, to hear that special speaker. Um, and then uh, some people were going through a tough time and they you know, talked to a friend about it and that friend said, hey, you know, I've got something that might be of help to you. Why don't you come give New Horizon a chance? Here's the takeaway we wanna have for you. Your invitations work. We hear Mark talk about it all the time. Now you get to hear Andy and Scott talk about it. Your invitations work. Uh, we're not here to say, hey, go invite, invite, invite. Here's what I'm asking you to do. Pray that God would open up some doors that you might be an invitational part of New Horizon. You're gonna encounter somebody this week who is going through a thing. And all you have to do is say, you know, I'm your friend. I want what's best for you. I'd like to invite you to be a part of, of, of what we're doing at New Horizon. So I would encourage you to, to uh, pray in that direction. So number two, number two of the four that we're focusing on, that first impression when you walked into New Horizon, what were we hearing there? And some, some commonality that, again, you're probably going to really align with is our great worship, uh, worship team here in the band and just really uh, feeling that, loving that. Uh, that was one of the first impressions. Um, you know, the people, the, the, the groups, uh, maybe the lack of things. Maybe you're used to, you know, pipe organs and you're used to <laughs> certain hymns and maybe it's a lack of that. Maybe that was one of your first impressions. Uh, but again, there was that commonality that kind of started to come to the surface on something we could really focus on. So here's the thing that we heard time and time again. Uh, we heard those things, yes. Where is the pipe organ? I, this doesn't feel like church to me. And boy, that pastor, he sure has a lot of energy. Boy, how... <laughs> Another, a thing that we heard, though, consistently is, man, that New Horizon church is friendly. I walked in the door, and there were people smiling at me. There were people shaking my hand and welcoming me, and not because they're supposed to, but because they actually wanted to. They, 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 they noticed. Maybe some of you are that way. You walked in. Where's Vic? Vic is one who, who brought this to me. Yeah, Vic. He's stuck to New Horizon because the people here are so dang friendly. And guess what? We all get to be a part of that, right? I, I occasionally, I walk in on a Sunday morning, I've got a little bit of baggage, right? I've got a, uh, some stresses in my life. Well, guess what? I can still smile. I can still say, hey, it's good to see you today. I'm glad you're here. Mm -hmm. You never know that one little friendly exchange, that one little smile, that one little handshake, that one little hi, how are you, and actually meaning it, might actually be the first seed that gets planted that keeps a person engaged in New Horizon for years to come. So I wanna encourage you to be encouraging. And then number, number three, so you know, what kept uh, our survey responses, what kept them involved uh, with New Horizon? Uh, a few different things here, the scripture, so a biblically based uh, teaching and really hearing that message and, and that really spoke, uh, spoke to them. Um, different connections, getting involved, small groups, uh, kids ministry, uh, something that really spoke to your heart and you, you felt that nudge, you felt that pull and then that really brought you brought you in a little bit more. Um, so many, but there was kind of a big word that really stood out in this one. There was, Scott. What was that big? Relationships. Relationships. Yep. Relationships. Relationships formed around the thread of Jesus tend to be very, very rugged. They tend to be very, very resilient. They endure over time. And, and that's not by accident, right? That's God's design for us as human beings. He created us for relationship. And so uh, our, our ask of you is to be open to the relationships that form here at New Horizon. Uh, you got a lot of things happening on a Sunday morning, on a weekend. Sometimes you just wanna take a deep breath and stay in your pajamas and drink coffee. But if you have a relationship with somebody here at New Horizon, they might text you and say, hey, I missed you today. I didn't see you today. So if you're good with relationships and you're relational, then add a boy, keep doing it. If you're like me and relationships are a little bit harder, I wanna just encourage you to try to be intentional about relationships because that tends to uh, be a thing that, that keeps folks engaged in, in New Horizon. And then that last one, kind of that fourth pillar uh, we were looking at here, and that was really looking to the, the future and speaking to kind of our focus here of, of love God, love others, and, and make disciples, right? Discipleship. 
and getting that feedback, what were people feeling? And, and across the board, extremely positive yeah. uh, for that. And you know, we've been we've been praying for a revival for for years and years now, and 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 kind of looking for those nudges, get, you know, listening for that soft voice that would kind of point us in that direction. And uh, discipleship is really starting to to connect with people. Now, if you're like me, it doesn't mean you're necessarily excited about that or you know how to do it or it's really uh, innate in you but specifically for me and others we talk to that's something that they really want to get better at and they're willing to to lean into it yeah so an outcome of our study is we know that we need to help folks along the path of discipleship we need to do some teaching about what does it mean how do you do it how do you go about doing it the good news is we've got an excellent leader who discipleships like crazy uh, and, and can show us and lead us uh, in that path. So again, we just want you to be open to that. Uh, it's a, it's a, a, a very specific direction that God has put on Mark's heart and, um, and your body of Christ called New Horizon is, is uniformly uh, thrilled with that direction uh, per our, our, our survey. So, uh, so stay tuned for, for some equipping of the saints to be all about disciples. Uh, now, we mentioned this was the first phase. That inherently then means that there is a second phase of this outreach effort. And we're not gonna announce that just now, but do, do, do know that in the weeks ahead, we're gonna talk about next steps in terms of learning how we can uh, grow uh, as a body of Christ. So for now, uh, those four things that we'd like you to be a part of. Pray for an invitational spirit. God's gonna open a door for you if you only ask him to do it and um, be prepared to walk through that door. Uh, practice hospitality. Um, it's, a, a, it's a way that we can connect with people who are walking here for the first time. There, there's somebody sitting in this room today who's never been in this building before. And the way that we treat that person is gonna say a lot about their future with our church. Oh, you took mine. So yeah, I'm sorry. I gotta, sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's be intentional with investing in relationship. Um, yeah, there's a there's really there's there's not a soul in this building today that wouldn't benefit uh, from another friend, it's true. right? It's true. The ups and downs of life, and um, I think this day and age, a lot of people are missing that foundation. So when you come into a challenge, man, you just don't have anybody to turn to 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 help you through that. So that friendship and relationship is so important, especially in this day, and and then discipleship. Uh, again, that's something that a lot of us, uh, myself including, are, are working uh, to get better at. Um, but, I mean, there's, there's no better, right? There's no better calling uh, to help somebody else open their eyes, uh, to grow in their relationship with Jesus. And again, get that foundation from a friendship, but also a in-the-book, a biblically-based foundation, which will really, really help them through every different part of their life. Praise God. People, people, people. Here's what I've heard this morning, that we've got a God who is a lion and he's a lamb. He watches over us with a jealous love. And I heard today about a church that's invitational and very friendly and relational and wants to make disciples. Dang, I want to serve that God and go to this church. That's how I feel about it. Anybody else want to agree with that? Father, I thank you very much for these two men. I thank you what they've brought to our governing board. I thank you, God, for the people that participated, sharing their hearts. God, I thank you, Father, that you're uniting our hearts under the banner of the Great Commission. Father, we pray that we truly, truly would be the church of your heart's desire, that we would love you passionately and love others as ourselves and seek, seek, seek to help people to know Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Give it up for our brothers. Thank you.